So by now you've heard all about vitamin D as it relates to the current public health problem. But in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the mechanisms through which vitamin D might affect immune system health. Now that we're going to draw upon a recently published study by researchers in South Korea involving over 2000 subjects. And they found that vitamin D levels and exercise are determinants of natural killer cell activity, especially in aged individuals. So I think it's a fascinating study because it turns out that natural killer cell activity as it relates to COVID-19 and how that affects the whole disease process and sequela associated with that infection is really important. First of all, for reducing initial viral load and also in the adaptive immune response when people are infected with COVID-19. So before we dive into the study, let's just cover some foundations. So we, we all understand what natural killer cells are, what they do and how they're relevant to the current health problem. And then when we talk about how vitamin D levels and exercise can beneficially impact natural killer cell activity, we have a good foundation from which to draw upon. Okay, so you have your adaptive immune system and you've heard all about antibodies and T cell immunity. So that's part of your adaptive immune system, which provides immunologic memory so that when you get re-exposed or reinfected to a pathogen, you have some sort of you know, groundwork from which to build upon and hopefully can have just a minimal or mild course of illness, okay? So that's your adaptive immune system. But today we're gonna to talk more about these natural killer cells, which are part of your innate immune system. Now your innate immune system has no memory. It's kind of an all or nothing response. Now, interestingly, various diseases such as obesity, insulin resistance, hypertension, and all the chronic inflammatory mediated diseases caused by eating a Western diet and having a sedentary lifestyle are characterized by an increased expression of innate immune system sort of activation. So there's this chronic smoldering uh, inflammation, chronic smoldering uh, increases in the innate immune system, which leads people to be more susceptible when they get exposed to something like SARS-CoV-2 because the innate immune system particularly natural killer cells, should take care of the job early. There should be an early and robust initial natural killer cell response. But if your innate immune system is being burdened down uh, with you know, industrial processed uh, foods and ultra processed foods, refined seed oils, sugar, and sedentary activity, it seems like there's not enough bandwidth for your innate immune system to take care of the job. And so therefore you have increased viral load and problems later on. Now, let me just quickly pause because in just a few moments after we talk about this study, from South Korea and the links between vitamin D, exercise, and natural killer cell activity. We're gonna talk about a recently published paper in the military that found overweight individuals tend to have higher viral load compared to more lean counterparts. So this viral load element comes in. Okay, so with that as a foundation, let's continue on and talk why, about furthermore, why natural killer cells are so important. Number one, they help to take care of pathogens, viruses, bacteria, things like that. They're part of your initial innate immune response. but equally or almost as important uh, to that is the expression of the cytokines that, that they release help to signal your adaptive immune system. So they are part of initiating that adaptive immune response as well so that you can create T cell and antibody mediated immunity. So check it out. If you have exercise deficiency, vitamin D insufficiency, or you're of advanced age and you have both of those potentially, well, guess what? You have suboptimal natural killer cell activity you have increased viral load, and you could have a problem then if you get exposed to this current pathogen or even something a little bit more benign like influenza. So that's sort of the background. I know it gets a little complex when you hear about adaptive versus innate immunity and all that. Suffice it to say, natural killer cells are really important. They're also important in preventing cancer. So they seek and destroy neoplastic cells, malignant cells, and also infected cells with viruses and other pathogens. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what the study found. The details of the study is vitamin D and exercise are major determinants of natural killer cell activity, which is age and gender specific. So there's some pretty interesting findings here to give more sort of prescriptive details to women versus men as they age when it comes to vitamin D levels and exercise. So the scientists investigated how age, gender, and vitamin D and physical exercise were associated with immune function determined by natural killer cell activity. Age was a determining factor for the very low natural killer cell activity in men, but not in women. So let's pause there. We've heard all throughout the past 20 months that men are disproportionately impacted in terms of there's a gender bias for severe outcomes, morbidity, and mortality from this particular virus. So men should take note, the men in your life, you should share this information with them that exercise and optimal vitamin D levels may help to support natural killer cell activity. 
Okay. Sufficient levels of vitamin D reduce the risk for very low natural killer cell activity in men and physical exercise reduce the risk for low natural killer cell activity in women. In men under the age of 60, sufficient vitamin D levels reduce the risk for very low natural killer cell activity. In subjects over the age of 60, physical exercise reduced the risk of low activity of these natural killer cells in both men and women. Okay, so let's just make it very clear what this study looked at. They looked at 2,995 subjects uh, during their routine health checkups way before the pandemic. So this was between the years 2016 and 2018. And they used this assay that unfortunately is not commercially available here in the U.S. It's called a natural killer cell assay. And essentially what this assay is, uh, it measures the amount of interferon gamma released by natural killer cells in one milliliter of peripheral blood. And so essentially there's an antigen stimulation, the natural killer cells release this interferon gamma and they quantify how much interferon gamma is released. And so what we're gonna do now is share with you some of the pictures and, and correlations between uh, the natural killer cell function, vitamin D levels and exercise and talk about some of the specific blood levels that are associated with optimal activity of these natural killer cells. And again, I just wanna make it very clear here. What, when we talk about these studies, we're talking about probability. We're thinking in terms of bets. There are outliers that are healthy and have sufficient vitamin D levels and have sufficient exercise that might have low natural killer cell activity. But what these studies look at is the probability of having low natural killer cell activity is reduced in these certain situations where people exercise more and have high vitamin D levels. Okay, so we're speaking in terms of bets and probability. Okay, so more background and perspective. Decreased natural killer cell function in immunologically normal individuals were associated with increased risk for cancer development. So this is just general sort of talk about uh, natural killer cell function. It's important to note here that even in 2020, during the outbreak of this novel virus, cancer still claimed uh, more lives than COVID-19 and in fact was the second leading cause of death in the US and I, I believe worldwide, it's a major cause of death worldwide. So decreased natural killer cell function in immunologically normal elderly were associated with increased risk for severe infections and mortality just in general, again, independent of COVID-19. So really important, uh, especially as you age. Further studies on COVID-19 suggest that natural killer cells may play a critical role in the early response, which can be determined by overall outcome for disease. For example, severe COVID-19 cases were characterized by depleted peripheral natural killer cell counts compared to mild or healthy controls. So this speaks to kind of where we were starting this conversation to build the foundation from which, you know, the immunologic information then we can build upon. I mentioned that individuals who have chronic low-grade inflammation, that's really characterized by uh, innate immune system activation. So if you have an exhausted innate immune system, uh, it can become depleted when you get a severe infection. And as the study clearly has demonstrated, uh, and many others, by the way, we've talked about this immune exhaustion. This is a real thing. Now, unfortunately, uh, the available tests to sort of ascertain whether or not someone has immune exhaustion or immunosenescence are not totally commercially available. And unfortunately, this natural killer cell activity assay is also one of those tests that's not available. You know, this was conducted at a research university. But it's important to understand that we can triangulate by looking at C-reactive protein. We can look at our liver enzymes. We can look at our white blood cell count. We can sort of triangulate to see what's going on here. Okay, so the researchers continue on with natural killer cells, which mediate cytotoxicity, were depleted in ventilator-dependent patients. The CD56 natural killer cells that is regulated by the immune regulatory producing interferon gamma were significantly depleted in all COVID-19 patients that were on ventilators. Okay, so there's a correlation here with an exhausted immune system and severe disease uh, and altered natural killer cell activity. Okay, so... With all that, let's just get into the simple nuts and bolts, what these scientists found. Uh, what they found is that compared to low vitamin D levels, individuals that had vitamin D levels in the 30 to 39 nanograms per ml range had decreased risk for very low natural killer cell activity in men. So it seems that when it comes to men, especially over the age of 60, vitamin D levels are, are critical for supporting natural killer cell activity. Interestingly though, these observations were not observed in women. Now this doesn't mean that vitamin D couldn't be helpful in women, but what these scientists found in particular is for men, especially men over the age of 60, that having sufficient vitamin D levels defined as a blood level between uh, 30 and 39 nanograms per ml seemed to be very supportive in supporting natural killer cell activity. 
So compared to lack of physical exercise and low exercise, medium to high intensity exercise decreased the risk for very low natural killer cell activity in women. In men, physical exercise was not associated with the risk. So again, we have vitamin D seems to benef more beneficially support this critically important immune cell in men, whereas exercise seems to more support in women the activity of this critically important immune cell. So we just need to understand that we're all a little bit different and we all need to figure out what's going to work for us based upon our gender and our age. Um, so we're going to continue on here, but I do just want to welcome back our new listeners. I'm Mike Mutzel. I'm grateful that you're tuning in here. If you've enjoyed this video and you think this content is has been helpful, you can hit that like button. If you're on iTunes, you can share this with a friend or family member and also check out the show notes. So what we'd like to do in these videos is provide you all the images and the details and the references so you can share this with your friends and family members to make them healthy. Now, of course, we're not going to talk about treating, preventing, diagnosing, or curing diseases here, but I do just want to mention our show sponsor, Myoscience Nutrition, has a suite of amazing gummies that taste phenomenal that your whole family will enjoy. A vitamin D gummy, a zinc gummy, vitamin C gummy, and a, a chewable gummy multivitamin. So if you want to support your body's micronutrient balance, please hop on over to the show sponsor's website, myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. That's myoscience with an X.com, and use the coupon code podcast to save. So let's continue on. So they, they noticed, uh, they noted a lot of observations and we're going to talk about what is that sweet spot of vitamin D levels with the current public health problem right now. And it turns out that it might be between 40 and 60 nanograms per ml. So going on here, we checked the correlation between vitamin D levels and exercise. I thought this was pretty fascinating. So there was a significant correlation between individuals who had uh, high exercise uh, and vitamin D levels. So it could be that you know, when people are exercising, guess what? They're going outside. They're getting their body exposed to sun. I mean, who would have thought that that would be healthy, right? Uh, I see so many people in the gym, small little anecdotal story here. So many people in the gym, on the treadmill, on the elliptical, and while it's great that they're moving their bodies, it's so much better to go outside and find a hill, breathe fresh air, uh, get your retina and your body exposed to the great benefits of the sun, especially midday sun, as we get into fall, remember, the intensity of the sunlight is going to diminish as the sun becomes, at least for those of us in you know northern latitudes, uh, it's going to become weakened. So midday sun, really important for helping to uh, entrain your body's circadian clock system. Okay, continuing on here, in men less than the age of 60, vitamin D levels between 30 and 39 nanograms per ml significantly decrease with the risk of very low uh, natural killer cell activity. So what we need to understand is having vitamin D levels between 30 and 39 nanograms per ml seems to uh, be helpful for men, both under the age of 60 and over the age of 60. Okay, so continuing on here with women, uh, low natural killer cell activity uh, in women didn't seem to be impacted by age as much as with men. So that's kind of interesting. Now, what I would like to sort of finish up on is before we move into the second study that we're going to talk about in today's podcast, which is all about obesity and viral load, it's important to understand that these natural killer cells impact the immune system as we age and may offset immunosenescence. So we've talked a lot about thymic involution. Now, as you age, you, the size of your thymus gland and the amount of T cells that you produce tends to decline. So this is known as immunosenescence. This is uh, characterized as a thymic involution. Now, it turns out that these natural killer cells may compensate for this natural age-related loss in the, the volume of this critically important gland that synthesizes your T cells. So your natural killer cells pick up the slack. And this is where sort of the take-home message of this part of today's podcast really becomes sort of actionable is we should consider supporting our body's vitamin D levels. And again, these authors talk about between the ranges of 40 and 60 nanograms per ml. So that's important. And what they found with exercise, it was a minimum of two days a week up to four days per week. There was, as you can see in this one image here, over-exercise can reduce natural killer cell activity. Or it was associated with a, a greater odds of low natural killer cell activity. So some is good, but more is not always better. Life is a big U-shaped curve, right? Some sleep is good, you know, but if you sleep 15 hours a day, that's not healthy either. Some water is good. Drinking 10 gallons a day is not healthy. So we need to understand uh, there's a correlation there. So this may be, you know, sort of the connections between exercise and vitamin D appear in addition to all the pleiotropic roles that exercise and vitamin D have on the body, they appear to really critically impact this important cell. So the scientists want to say 
Vitamin D plays an important role in immune health by affecting the maturation and differentiation of various immune cells, including production of antiviral peptides, calocytins, and defensins, and reducing production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And so they go on to talk about all the different benefits and, and all these sort of things. And we also know that physical exercise interventions resulted in an improved immune state. Uh, various markers, such as these T cells, are, are improved. Uh, increases in the salivary immunoglobulin A, IgA. We've talked about secretory IgA before. Really important, just having psychological stress reduces secretory IgA. Uh, decreased neutrophil counts and higher antibody concentrations after vaccination. So again, these are the benefits ascribed to physical exercise. Okay, so they continue on here. Compared to the adaptive and other innate, innate immune system cells, natural killer cell function is better preserved along the immunosenescence process owing to the reciprocal increase in natural killer cell counts to compensate for per cell functional decreases of the T cells. So again, as you age, your T cells start to go like this. Your thymus gland starts to decline at around age 18. And by the time you're 70, there's almost no presence of this thymus gland. Now that doesn't mean that you... Uh, couldn't benefit from, you know, improved uh, thymus uh, gland and there's thymus glandulars. There's a lot you can do to support the thymus. But it turns out that these natural killer cells are important there and they, they sort of pick up the slack. So therefore, natural killer cell activity or natural killer cells in general um, may serve as a good parameter for immunosenescence in healthy immune aging. So I want to pause here. There is an assay that you can ask your doctor for. And I'm not suggesting everyone runs out and does this because when you start testing for your immune system parameters, it gets very expensive very quickly. So there's a CD57, there's a CD56. This one assay, I, and it doesn't give you activity, it's just a, a marker here, a quantitative marker, a count. Um, I wanna say it's about $79. So if you do a whole immune panel, it's like $350. That's cash, our prices, you know, providers through my wife's account. Um, so. You're going to pay top dollar for this, so I don't suggest running out trying to figure this out. Triangulate, look at, is your white blood cell count high or low? Is it is it over six or, or even higher? Uh, and what's your C-reactive protein? You can sort of look at and triangulate there. Okay, so furthermore, the present study showed that physical exercise reduced the risk for very low natural killer cell activity in individuals over the age of 60. So this is really important. Risk, especially for COVID-19, tends to increase dramatically over the age of 60. And this is consistent with previous studies that investigated the role of physical exercise in ameliorating immunosenescence. So again, we know that exercise, we've talked about this for the past several years now, really important for so many different things, fat loss, uh, metabolic health, sleep. I mean, there's you know so many mitochondrial function. But one of the, one of the main benefits of exercise appears to be offsetting these, these amino senescent cells and sort of purging them. And we're going to talk about in a future podcast about sauna therapy. It seems that sauna therapy may impact uh, these senescent cells, particularly in the immune system. Okay, so let's continue on. Talk about this, this study right here, fasting study. By the way, both of these are in the show notes. I would encourage you to check them out and share them with friends or family so that we can have better conversations about how to, how to handle this current public health problem. So the title of this involves some jargon, so bear with me here. So clinical immunological and virologi virological SARS-CoV-2 phenotypes in obese and non-obese military system health beneficiaries. So the long and short of this study was over 619 subjects were tracked between March 20th, 2020 and uh, September 15th of 2020. And what they found is that there was a significant correlation between outpatients that had tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, obesity, and viral load. Now, this is important because we're hearing so much in the media about viral load, about how you know certain medications and compounds and treatments uh, can potentially reduce viral load and all of this. Well, it turns out that obesity is a factor contributing to increased viral load. And so I thought this was really interesting. And by the way, this was published in the Oxford Press for the Infectious Disease Society of America. So this is, again, not some conspiracy theorist journal. So important to understand. Now, why are we talking about this? I don't want to vilify overweight people. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, blame anyone for having increased body mass. But I do just want to, um, you know, encourage individuals and our society in large to focus on other preventative strategies to reduce disease severity and hospitalizations and death. And one of those is exercise, weight loss, intermittent fasting, and all the different 
you know, sort of lifestyle factors that can improve health. We've been saying for a long time that we don't have time to improve health because, you know, it's a novel virus and all this. Well, we've been saying that for now 20 months. Imagine if there was a mainstream public health message that would encourage people to start walking more, get outside, increase physical activity and so forth. Because it's been long known, and this was at the start of the pandemic, and this was a study that we actually shared. So this was investigators in Wuhan reported that for each one unit increase in body mass index, that was associated with a 12% increase in the risk for severe COVID-19. So let's just think about this. If you go from a BMI of say, you know, 25 to 30, so you go from overweight uh, to obese, okay, that you, you that's like almost 100% increased risk for severe COVID-19. Um, and what they also found is that obesity was linked with a 3x increase in the risk for severe uh, COVID-19 compared to non-obese. Now, where are we hearing about this? Pretty much nowhere. Now, we just shared a podcast the other day showing that children, especially children between the ages of 5 and 11, there was a 23% increase in the prevalence of obesity and overweight in children. Uh, as a result of our response to the COVID-19 outbreak, because this was tracked by Kaiser Permanente. They tracked, you know, the same time period leading up to the to the pandemic and the same amount of months afterwards uh, through, you know, hospital visits and medical visits and, and things like that in pediatric clinics and found that we have dramatically worsened overweight and obesity in children. We know that, you know, the stay-home orders and the shelter-in-place was linked Every week was like, I can't remember, it was like half a kilogram of body weight people gained and, and it kept increasing over time. So we know that some of our interventions have side effects and those side effects actually increase risk for severe outcomes. So why are we not talking about this? So again, I just want to share this study with you. I think it's fascinating. It's just worth noting that viral loads are increased in individuals who are obese. Now, what's interesting in this study, and I just want to be very transparent and talk about the nuances here, is they had two different arms of the study. Some patients were outpatients, meaning that they felt ill, they might have went to the doctor and got a test and then went home. And then there was other people that needed to be hospitalized. They didn't find the correlation between high viral loads in obese individuals that were hospitalized or so-called inpatients. Now, why is that? The researchers and the investigators in this article said, well, it could be because these individuals were given antiviral medications, uh, things like remdesivir and other drugs uh, to bring down viral load. So there wasn't that correlation there. And that was probably confounded by the fact that they were given medication. So anyway, friends, hopefully you enjoy this podcast and this conversation. The take home message here is we got to focus on lifestyle factors because obesity is linked with higher viral loads, higher viral loads, increase the probability of the so-called cytokine storm and collateral damage and long haul and all of that. So if you're worried about preventing all that, well, then you should start exercising, possibly increase your vitamin D levels because those can give you a greater odds of having higher natural killer cell activity and having a more robust early and initial immune response against this bug that is circulating all around us, friends. So I'm grateful that you tuned in all the way. Thanks for leaving a comment. Thanks for hitting that like button. We will catch you in a future podcast down the road. Catch you all soon. Bye now.